Okay, so I wanted to watch this video. It's a video by Tobin. Today I'm gonna tell you. It's a, to a video about Tobin about uh, starting a waifu church that made him go viral. And I really, I really want to watch this. All right, here we go, guys. Today I'm gonna tell you about the story on how Sayaka Mizuno became my obsession. A while ago, I made a video titled The Church of Mizuno. In a nutshell, I made this video where I showcased my obsession with a character from an anime called Danganronpa. I shared this obsession with the I'm world- I'm not gonna lie, I don't even know who, which character that is, because I have it. Is she from like the original Danganronpa? By showing everything I had made of Sayaka Maizuno, from me making an army of cutouts of her in my- Did you guys know that this guy's dad made Grease? <laughs> Me yeah. covering my entire upstairs with Honestly, Grease is kind of a banger. I re I actually really like that that I really I really like the soundtrack to Grease and stuff. Pictures of her. I like it. And even declaring my house a church for my But can you imagine though that this guy's dad is so chill that his <laughs> Can you imagine having a dad that chill and like a mom that chill where you're like, "Mom and dad, I'm um I'm turning our house into like an anime church." And they're like, "You do whatever, son." Son, you do whatever your dreams tell you. <laughs> no, in which I worshipped her. A video going viral. However, the biggest question people had was whether this was some form of joke, with them questioning whether it was satire. You know, at first I thought this was a joke, but if it still is a joke, they really put a lot of work into it. Therefore, today I'm going to answer this. Dude, dude and he did. Discuss he, he, he put, so, like, actually, if you look at the process, he, by the way, he makes all of these with printers, like regular ass printers. It's actually like really crazy. Like he hand makes them, like he hand, like, like, like he put, he cuts them by hand and he puts them together, like by hand. It's actually so crazy. It's what started it all and why I made this video in the first place. It all began back in 2021. It while is the highest commitment ever. It's like, it, it, it is, yeah, 100%. Well, one day while browsing TikTok, I came across a video that would change my life. The video in question depicted a guy showing how obsessed and down bad he was for the character Peak from Attack on Titan. Good choice. Peak is the best. Uh, Peak is the second best waifu from Attack on Titan. Second best. No, no, first best. Wait, no. Yes, for... Uh, yeah, she's the first best. She's the first best. And she's the first best. to say. Number one. Watching this, though, gave me an idea. I would make a video similar to this, but with my favorite character, Sayaka Maizuno, which in turn would lead to my quote-unquote Maizuno obsession for the next two years. My motivation to make this video stemmed from me struggling to make videos gain traction, as it was early on when I started making content. And the way that I thought about it is that I had already made two giant cutouts of Sayaka that were 12 and 41 feet tall, respectively. Those are so huge. So I wouldn't need to do much more work to make it seem like I was a crazy, anime-obsessed neckbeard. Wait a minute. So was this all a ploy? Wait, this was... This was all, like... This was all a ploy? Wait, wait a minute. So he's not an anime-obsessed neckbeard? He's not an anime-obsessed neckbeard? This was all, like, for clout? As I already was. Oh, I really well. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> had no bitch. But to ensure the video's success, I went the extra okay. mile. Oh my god! Oh my god! I, dude, I, dude, I, dude, I almost lost it because I, 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 I was, I was like, my hero is not real. I was like. I was going into like absolute, I was going through like all the stages of grief. Like I literally went through all the stages of grief, like in my mind just now. I went from no way, there's no way he's not real. There's no way this isn't real. And then like, wait a minute, it's not real to like, I'm going to unfollow this bitch because like, what the fuck, man? He's just tricking me the whole time. I, I went through all of it, dude. Yeah, humanity and restored. Exactly. Things. Humanity restored. I put restored. a Mizuno sticker on my drone, Amazon Echo, alongside changing my title on my LinkedIn profile to say that I worked at the Saika Mizuno construction. This guy's my fucking hero. I was like, dude, is he real? Dude, like, like this guy is this guy and Elon Musk. They're my heroes. Construction company. By this point, I. Oh, and Joe Rogan. 
I had worked on the video for about three months and it was now time to post and almost immediately after posting it, no one cared about the video. But then three months later, I wake up to see I was tagged in a subreddit I'd never heard of called r slash cringetopia. I'd been posted to a subreddit which basically is meant to laugh at people for being cringe and after checking, I realized the video had not only been posted there but to multiple subreddits alongside Subcast. TikTok, Instagram, right and after Twitter. This one, we'll go. And soon it became my most viewed video at the time. Now I was both happy and disappointed. Happy my efforts didn't go to waste, but also disappointed because it was being reposted without any lead back to me. But it was at this moment I realized how many people liked the Mizuno bit and the power of cringe. So I decided rather than scrapping it and take the loss, instead I would double down and make a sequel and do everything right this oh time. Oh my god! I had a watermark. I was going to make the video longer and higher budget. And this would be the beginning of me making the Church of Mizuno. The plan for the video was insane. To make it, I upgraded from having one printer to ten, which were also Mizuno themed, of course. <laughs> this was in order so I could do a huge to-do list for the video, which included making 300 Mizuno oh cutouts, my God. a planned 120 foot tall cutout of Mizuno, a brand new do-it-yourself audience stand made out of cardboard. The entire upstairs of my house would be covered head to toe with pages of Mizuno and there would be at least 10 separate locations I would film at alongside a bunch of other miscellaneous stuff. Needless to say, the video was going to be crazy, so I started working on the video and then started- Dude, look at the effort that this would have taken, though. It's actually like posting updates a to next Reddit level and obsession. other platforms as a series. As I found out, just posting the updates to making this video were getting more traction and views than many I love of the reposts guy. of the original video. This guy's my hero. And after a while, memes and artwork started being made about it. This one was one of my favorites. It was a drawing made of Saika reacting to the Saika house. I later put that in my house because I wanted to make it <laughs> Dude, meta. what a chat, dude. They made a meme. They made a meme to make fun of it, and then he posted it in his house. Oh, man, so much respect. Point, so much respect. Started calling me the Sayaka guy whenever I was recognized online or at IRL conventions. I was pretty grateful by the reception. I wasn't expecting any of this to happen, so it was quite a shocker from just having a small TikTok following. And from this point on, I was just really curious where this would lead me and continue down the path to finish the sequel, which is when everything went wrong. This is like, you know, like those people that are like, again, this is like another person. This is another another thing. Like, how do I explain? It's, it's, it's another. Another case of like a, a, a person that there's a thing, but you need a very specific skill set to do it. And this guy has it because this is like an insane amount of patience and obsession. And like this requires a very, spe very specific set of skills and a very specific personality to like actually do this because this is like hours upon hours of work. Yeah, what chaos said. <laughs> it's like, you know, like those, those yeah, it, it is kind of autistic. I and mean, I'm not trying to say that in an offensive way, but it's it, it's autistic in the sense that like like those people that are really good at it. You, you, they're really good at a very specific thing and they hyper focus on it. Now, during this time, I had not only been making Mizuno stuff, but other things such as making Hull Live cutouts, YouTubers, streamers, and moved into a different place. And because of this, I put the Mizuno project on hiatus for a while with everything I had made for the video in the garage. So, one day, when I took these things out to work on them, I had a soul-crushing revelation. The giant 120-foot tall cutout of Mizuno had become wrinkled beyond repair. Oh no! And all the cardboard bleachers had collapsed on themselves, making them useless, which I couldn't fix without having to remake it all. Two out of the three biggest parts of the video had become butchered. Only 60 life-size cutouts made it to the final video out of the 200 cutouts I already oh my made goodness. and the 300 I was planning. Dude, dude, can you imagine that? He lost so much work. Ending, as they were going to stand on the bleachers and was pretty discouraged once I realized I wouldn't be able to get the shot out. Dude, I would pay for one of those. I was looking for And only one third of the giant cutout was- I bet you he wouldn't sell it though. <laughs> Finish, which was also wrinkled, forcing me to essentially scrap it all. If I release the video now, the video wasn't going to do well. Because of that, for a few months, I didn't work on the video, deciding if I should cancel it, but ultimately decided while what I had filmed was only a fraction of what the end product was going to be. Uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not that known. <laughs> oh 
Oh my god. It was god. still impressive enough to oh be my god, for the video, But in order to compensate, I was going to add a bunch of things that weren't planned. Oh my god, she's got a scar. Like one of the cutest rifles. And and by the end of it, I had so many Mizuno related things which were so different from one another. I didn't know how to connect it all to make a video that had a narrative. Which I thought was needed or else the video wasn't going to do well. When Dude, I got so scared watching this video. Like the beginning part where he's like, people, <laughs> the whole thing about the, the oh god. I went, I got so scared. When I was making all of this, I was just <laughs> thinking of things that- I was gonna be so depressed if that was real. If it was like, yeah, I'm not actually like into anime that much. It's just like, you know, like, you know, I just wanted to be popular on TikTok. I was, dude, I was gonna, I would have cried. Like, actually, like, dude, I felt so emotional at that time, dude. Were funny to me and making them. So by the end, I had to figure out how this would all fit together into some form of story. So I brainstormed and decided that the reason why I had all of these things I'm is so glad because it's I real. started a church for Mizuno. I got yeah, the my idea. reality was was tearing apart. It was, dude. Idea from these types of subreddits that exist that thirst over anime characters. <laughs> you got the Church of Tifa, the Church of Pyra, the Church of Chun Li, etc. So when I was thinking, Ch Chun Chun Li of doing the same thing really? with Mizuno, I thought it would be funny if I turned it into an actual place. And now I had a reason for all the Mizuno stuff that I owned. The 60 choirs in my living room, well, that would be the choir for the church. The pages on my wall would be like the paintings on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Oh my god! This guy got inspired by the Sistine Chapel! Oh, I the love this so army much. The would be to prevent people from stealing holy artifacts from the church, <laughs> and the giant cutouts I had made would be like giant monuments that I oh my God. I think the Mizuno video turned out this. a lot more creative and interesting because I had this narrative rather than I was just a crazy psycho Mizuno fan who had all of this weird stuff for no reason. But now it was time to finally post the video. By this point, it was pushing nearly two years since I set out to make the sequel, and I knew if I wasn't going to post it now, I was never going to. And thus, I compiled every post I had made in the last two years and created the video. Oh Everything my gosh. Everything had come down to this. The file name for the video was The Tsar Bomba of Cringe. And with that, I released <laughs> the video on- <laughs> The Tsar Bomba is- the, the Tsar Bomba is like the biggest, uh, like- that's the biggest bomb ever blew up on Earth, right? I think it is the biggest, the biggest bomb ever, ever, ever exploded in the world. April 17th, 2023. And unlike last time, the shockwaves were instant. The video had been- Yes, the biggest nuclear bomb ever tested, Star Bomba, yeah. ...posted across all social media, as well as being translated into different languages, which then led to streamers and YouTubers to make videos about it, to the point where it's featured in online news and being played on TV in some places, which got the attention of both the English voice actor and Japanese this voice actor legend. of Saika, alongside the creator of Danganronpa, which then snowballed into a cosplayer named Ayame Hime to come to the church and cosplay Saika in the Saika house. <laughs> <laughs> and then shortly thereafter, a 30-minute documentary being made about me and my art that had been in the works for a while. I actually saw this one, yeah, the, the Nick Robinson the video. the video was being spread rapidly on the internet for about a week. Every day I was waking up to something new. And when this all happened, I wasn't expecting this again. I was more prepared this time, but I didn't think it would do so well because of how badly I butchered the video. Overall, I think I didn't do well on making it clear that it was satire and was meant to shock people. It was my intention to make the line a little blurry on whether it was satire, as that's what made the first video do so well, but not to the extent where the majority of people were unsure. After the video was crazy because I had a bunch of people asking whether I had started the church to <laughs> evade taxes by- Dude, how many people you think would actually go? I, I think if he actually did this, and he actually made like a church of Mizuno, I think people would actually go. Establishing my house as a church, alongside a bunch of people asking whether the church was real. It then escalated even further when my personal information got leaked in order to find more answers about who I was, most notably when the secret about my dad had been shared. When this came out, it was like dropping a nuke on a force that was already on fire. Yeah! And started being shared again. Because Gre Greece is huge! And, but additionally, with this bit of trivia. 
which then led a few AI-generated articles to be made about me and my family. According to one of the articles, I started an origami YouTube channel at the age of 10 that now has 2 million subscribers. Wait, what? My source is that I made it the fuck up. <laughs> but those few articles would quickly turn into many. Oh my god, I need to play that game, guys. That by the end of it, my dad's name was now Michael and was an engineer. Now I was an astrophysicist from Harvard <laughs> University. As well dude, AI, dude, AI. Hi, man. I was having degrees Unreal. from- How many people do you think just said, uh, AI write an article about Tobin, to they just- they just said, like, write an article about him, right? They're like, write an article about Tobin Jacobs, and they just said, like, his dad is an engineer. <laughs> Actually, I kind of wonder, like, what would happen if you typed that? I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna do it right now. Okay. Chat GPT-4, okay. Right. Okay. I'm not even going to prompt it or anything. So normally when you do one of these, you have to prompt it like in a very certain way in order to actually get like decent info. I'm going to go hard, just write a, a, an article about Tobin Jacobs. That's all I'm going to say. Write an article about Tobin Jacobs. Um, um, about um about his youtubing and his life and facts about his life and family Oh my god, see? It's just making shit up! It is making shit up, guys! Dude, this thing is just absolutely bullshitting right now. This is unreal. <laughs> this is- this is- dude, I'll guarantee you this is how it happened. Uh, the dynamic, a dynamic in the dynamic world of YouTube content creation, Tobin Jacobs has carved out a niche that re resonates with millions around the globe. Known for his engaged personality and diverse content range, Tobin has become a go-to source for entertainment insights and a touch of whimsy. Tobin was born blah 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 in Seattle, Washington. Blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, he, he, uh, his, his father is a software developer and his mother is a graphic designer. Uh, he, he launched his YouTube and uh, he does he. <laughs> He has a he has a broad range of tech tutorials, lifestyle vlogs, and cu cultural commentary. He he has a popular series and he he does deep dives on emerging technology trends. <laughs> this this thing just bullshitted this entire article. This is what happened, man. These like guys they just they just told AI to write this like in one sentence, and then they just literally copy pasted it. MIT and Brown University. I was an Italian native and was quote unquote <laughs> a fusion of diverse cultures See? with ties stretching from Pyongyang, North Holy Korea, North and Korea. Somalia. So overall, it was Somalia. a train wreck, which is still going to this day with AI articles. Popping Holy up shit, here and there. dude. I find it all really oh comical my God. just because oh, I'm of how sweaty. ridiculous it is. <laughs> and I'm sure most people do as well. But in hindsight, I think because the line was more blurry than intended on whether it was real, it was kind of a positive as it made it do a lot better, which in turn led to a lot of opportunities and learned a lot through the whole experience. But that basically summarizes the entire Mizuno saga and my Mizuno arc. You may be thinking, was it all for views? And the answer to this is actually no. Because while it is probably true, I wouldn't have done any of this if people hadn't expressed any interest in my Mizuno antics. I really could have done this with any anime character that was more popular and had a larger community. You know, that's I true. To make this that that actually is a hundred percent true. Is that if he wanted to be like, if he wanted like even more popularity, he would have picked a character that was more popular. Because like, I don't think a lot of people know that much about about Mizuno. So like, like the fact that he picked Mizuno as the character kind of it, it it does lead me to believe that there is reality based in it sequel and did someone or anything that i thought may have gone more viral but i chose yeah i could have gone way, way more viral with uh, it would have been faster way faster you know eyes know a character that basically no one knows of the type of it has to be niche to feel more real says e eucalypto 
content that I like to make. I wonder is if he increased Duncan Ropasol's probably. The type that could have only possibly come from me. Content that has a lot of integrity towards what I want to make that's never been seen before. Because Dude, that shit is ridiculous. Look at so that uniquely me. But overall, I'm really happy I went down this path. To me, it was quite wholesome, despite how shocking and strange what it was I was making. There was always a group of people that were supportive. What I realized from this is no matter how eccentric you are and how many people are going to make fun and ridicule you there's probably a corner of the internet that will also appreciate you no matter oh, how man. niche or weird it is but that's you guys <laughs> he's talking about you guys with the mice no arc ending all i want to say because you watch me and i'm fucking weird <laughs> i appreciate everyone who has shown interest and i hope you stick around but that will be all no matter what, that's actually such a wholesome mes message, actually, at the end. Well, so many people are going to make fun and ridicule you. There's probably a corner of the internet that will also appreciate you, no matter how niche or weird it is. Aww. But with the mice no arc... He's just like us for real. Dude, I got... Dude, I Six went... Six months. I, oh, what the literal unholy fuck did I just click onto? Oh my god, Ratifier, thank you so much for this stuff. Thank you. Thank you for six months. Thank you, dude. I, I, I actually got so scared. Like, I actually had, like, you know, like, when you get spooked and, like, you get that, like, cold rush through your body of, like, adrenaline, like, 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 like a fight or flight response. I literally just had to happen because I thought that this was all, like, fake and it was all for clout. And I, Ding. and, like, he's not actually into this. And I, I almost, dude, I got hurt inside. And then he was like, no, I am. And I was like, oh, God bless. All I want to say is... I appreciate everyone who has shown interest, and I hope you stick around. But that will be all. Goodbye. Oh, God bless. God bless. He's real. He's real, guys. God bless. Oh, uh, okay.